Hi guys, it's Madison from the Ohio Pet Sanctuary. We're doing another video and as per request, I wanted to talk about some of the things that you should have on hand at home in case of an emergency. Um, so some of these things are readily available at the store. Some of these you might already have at home. Um, I'm not really gonna talk species specific today, um, just kind of a general overall. And you guys can kind of get an idea of what you have based or need based on what kind of animals you have at home. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was like your basic general first aid things. Let's say your cat got his claw stuck on the couch and ripped it off, your dog broke a toenail, things like that. What kind of things you should have on hand for those kind of minor injuries. Um, first and foremost is gonna be your standard stuff. So that's gonna be things like tongue depressors in case you need to like move a toe gently, um, things like that. Um, it's really nice to keep your hands out of the way so that you can manipulate it if you need to. These are readily available as craft sticks at the dollar store so it's not something that's overly expensive. Um, another thing is going to be sterile saline. Now you can use sterile saline wipes for certain things but I always recommend to have eye flush just general old same stuff that you get at like Kroger or um, the pharmacy over the counter. It's just regular saline eye flush. That way if you have to flush something out or rinse off a wound, you can just squirt it on it and instead of having to wipe it, which may cause the animal more pain or discomfort. Other things can be things like iodine. Um, I don't recommend using things like iodine, triple antibiotic or things like that without talking to a veterinarian first because they might want to look at it to determine the depth of the wound. It may require surgery or sutures. There may be a foreign body in the wound that needs to be removed. So I don't typically recommend topical stuff without talking to your veterinarian first. But iodine can be purchased as a liquid from a dropper, um, a squirt bottle, or like I have here, which are the iodine sticks, which can be used for abrasions to clean off the top of abrasions. Um, other basic bandaging materials, Gauze pads, um, typically if we're dealing with a wound, I do recommend use gloves, um, have gloves on hand. Again, regular old, any kind of um, usable gloves that are clean, fresh out of a box or a pack, not the same ones that you use to wash your dishes. We don't wanna introduce that bacteria into any kind of wound. Um, so gloves, gauze squares, again, readily available at any um, pharmacy or anywhere that has a pharmacy, again, uh, Kroger, CVS, anybody like that, Meyer, um, they're pretty easy to get a hold of. Now, if there's an emergency that happens and you don't have gauze squares available, you can also use my favorite panty liners or maxi pads. Work fabulous. They are designed to absorb blood, so they are typically pretty good to use as a temporary fix to apply over a wound on your way to a veterinarian. Um, Non-adherent gauze pads, um, which are basically the not sticky part of a band-aid, are the best things to have on hand. Unfortunately, I forgot to grab one um, to show you guys what those look like, but you can find those at the store as well. That way they don't stick to the wound and again, cause the animal more discomfort. Like I said, these are really good for things like a broken or a torn toenail, something like that. Um, and then vet wrap. Tractor Supply, Amazon, Internet, wherever you want to get it, you can get it in whatever pretty color you want. Um, but these are, again, something that is absolutely essential um, for having over the counter. Oh, and um, also with the wound care, any kind of like styptic powder, um, which is a blood stoppage powder, um, easily available at most pet stores. We sell it in our online store. Um, if you don't have styptic powder available, you can also use cornstarch or powdered sugar. Those both work as well. In a pinch, you can use flour, but flour tends to be a little bit more coarse and not as effective. Um, what else do we got? Um, other things that you would, might want to consider having on hand, um, corn syrup, oops, I'm gonna make a mess. Corn syrup um, or Cairo syrup. If you have a very old animal, and this is any mammal species, a very old animal, a very young animal, or one that is sick and not eating. This is not a valuable source of calories for those animals that aren't eating, or if you have a diabetic animal. Um, it's not a valuable source of calories, but it is something that will help boost their blood glucose if their sugar is crashing or getting too low. Um, don't use your finger to apply this to the gums. Use a 
um, Q-tip or a cotton-tipped applicator and smear it on the gum line. Um, I don't recommend sticking your finger in the animal's mouth because you stick your finger in the animal's mouth with something that's got flavor to it, they might bite down. But this is good for cats, rabbits, dogs, pretty much any mammal. Along that note, if you do have the smaller animals, guinea pigs, um, rabbits, degus, gerbils, things like that, I do recommend always having some Oxbow Critical Care on hand. Um, this is good if they stop eating to try to get something in their body. Animals with a large cecum like these guys, if they stop eating for too long, it can cause problems like GI stasis, upset the bacterial balance in their gut, things like that. So this gives them something to keep moving through while your veterinarian is treating the initial cause of what is wrong with the animal. Now, aside from the animal being given stuff that it needs to eat or needs to have in it, what if your animal uh, needs to vomit? Um, if you have dogs, and this is dogs only, do not do this, and cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, any other animals except dogs, have hydrogen peroxide on hand in case you need to induce vomiting. Do not induce vomiting without talking to your veterinarian first. A lot of the things dogs can eat like the corrosive chemicals and toilet bowl cleaner, if they drink out of the toilet, things like that, can actually cause more damage coming up. So don't induce vomiting without talking to your vet first or calling an emergency clinic, but definitely have this on hand. Other things you're gonna to wanna to consider to have on hand are gonna be things like tweezers or thumb forceps in case you need to pull out splinters, bee stingers, um, different things. Uh, you've got part of a toenail hanging off you need to grab a hold of and pull off. Um, definitely recommend having those. Bandage scissors come in a lot of different varieties, but if you're going to have bandage equipment, you definitely want to have bandage scissors. Bandage scissors are designed, oddly enough I'm wearing one, to go underneath the bandage so that you can cut it off without causing any trauma to the animal and you're not going to um, poke the animal with the scissors. I personally like smaller is better, but the bigger ones are pretty easy to get a hold of. Other things, I know nobody likes to admit it, but you should always have a muzzle on hand. Doesn't matter if it's a cat or a dog, I happen to grab a dog muzzle. Um, I know nobody likes the idea that their animal is going to potentially bite them or doesn't want to believe that their animal would ever bite them, but if your animal is injured from a hit by a car, got into a fight with a dog, anything like that, they are not behaving like their normal selves. They may lash out, especially if they are injured and scared. So it is always a possibility, so we always recommend have a muzzle on hand. If you've never applied a muzzle, the short part of the muzzle goes on the top. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit my little friend here very well, but I can at least show you how to do it. The short part goes on the top, slide the long part under, and then fasten behind the ears. This will keep you safe, and if you're transporting them to a veterinary clinic, will keep the veterinary staff safe as well. The other thing you might want to have, consider having on hand is a slip leash. And the nice thing about slip leashes that make them different from other leashes, if your animal is thrashing, um, kicking, screaming because it's hurt, things like that, I definitely recommend a professional doing this, but in a pinch, you know, if you absolutely have to, a slip leash can be made into a loop, brought around, and then pulled tighter so that you keep your arm away from the animal instead of trying to fasten a leash somewhere closer to their mouth. Um, again, I don't recommend doing this without some training, but it is a good thing to have on hand if there's a potential that you might need it someday. Um, the other thing, the last thing I wanted to talk about that's commonly overlooked is a notepad and a pen. And the reason I say you want a notepad and a pen is if your animal is having seizures, you need to be writing down how frequently the seizures are happening and how often they're um, going on. If your animal is pregnant and in labor, you need to be writing down how frequently they're having contractions so that you can relay this information to a veterinarian. So always have access to something that you can write with and write on. This is gonna be valuable information for the doctor. Um, one thing I did wanna show you guys how to do today um, with all this, oh, and Benadryl. I almost forgot Benadryl. Um, definitely recommend having Benadryl on hand if you have a cat or a dog. Don't administer it again without talking to your veterinarian first. Um, 
the problem may not be something that Benadryl can fix or you know your animal may have, be having a more severe allergic reaction than you realize and they are going to need um, more heavy duty or more emergency intervention but have it on hand just in case your doctor says yeah go ahead and give it and tells you how much to give remember google can be your best friend or your worst enemy so please be very careful if you're googling any information um, but one thing I did want to show you guys how to do, and that's what my little friend here is for, is how to properly apply a bandage in case your animal does wind up with that torn or broken toenail. And I'm going to demonstrate that today with our um, panty liner and our vet wrap. So I'm just going to cut off a piece of this because my little friend here does not have a long leg. Here we go. I'm going to come around this way. So let's say he has broken a toenail. Um, let's say it's his dew claw on the inside, which is going to be his thumb. So I want to apply my absorbent material to um, the broken toenail. I then want to take my vet wrap and get my little piece started. And I want to put that over my, non, uh, my absorbent material. And when I wrap it around, I want my thumb in the way. And I want to pull it around that way. The point of my thumb being in the way is to keep the bandage from being too tight. Vet wrap, especially wet vet wrap, shrinks. It can cut off circulation in the toes and it can cause further trauma. So I wanna apply it around and then slide my thumb out. This bandage is not meant to be left on for more than 20 minutes. Never, ever, ever leave a bandage on for more than 20 minutes unless your veterinarian says otherwise. And then to remove the bandage, again, bandage scissors are designed to slide up underneath the bandage without hurting the animal and then just slide around and it pops right off. Okay, so again, this is just a general guide just to give you guys some ideas of things that you might want to have on hand. Um, if you'd like to purchase a pre-made first aid kit, we do actually sell professional um, pre-made first aid kits on our website at shopohiopetsanctuary.com. Um, otherwise, please do not apply any first aid um, or give any medication to your animals without calling a veterinarian first. Um, thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful.